Hello and welcome to the spooky, scary Halloween tag. As you can see, I grow my costume. Makes it so much easier. I also, of course, have my favorite Jack Skeleton and my I'm a Nightmare Before copy. So all set for spooky season. This is an original tag that was created by Nicole at Nicole's Bookish Nook. I was tagged by Kevin. Kevin was tagged by Joe and Mary from Book Buds, and Book Buds were tagged by Nicole last year, but decided to wait for this spooky season to do the tag, which worked out perfectly for me because my costume is coming along beautifully, and I'm also participating in Nicole's Spooky Scary Skeleton Readathon. So, this is perfect for back to back videos. I'll leave links to everyone's channel down below. Thanks to Book Chat with Pat, who shared the flow of how this tag came about. And also be sure to check out her channel. On to the questions. Number one Witchy Mayhem. Name a book you loved or hated about witches. My book is Your Book of Shadows. This is by Patricia Telesco. Now, the title says How to Write Your Own Magical Spells. And she spells magic with a K to differentiate between magic used by magicians, sleight of hand. Personally, I enjoy this book because it's an excellent book about organization, keeping notes and your research and your studies together. So for me, it isn't the writing magical spells, which I don't do. It's about the other information and organization that I enjoy. Prompt number two, The Pumpkin King, a fiction book about a spooky main character. For me, that goes to Taltos by Anne Rice. This is the third book in the Mayfair Witches trilogy. Although I didn't enjoy the first book, I did enjoy the next two. There is one very cringe part in Lasher, but the stories flow better in Lasher and Taltos. This is about a different species of being, how they were treated by other people, their lifestyle, everything is so different from the people around them. It's a very interesting read, and it is one that I did enjoy. Orange Fever. A book with the word orange in the title or a book with an orange cover? I went for the orange cover. I have several of these. I love the idiot's guides. One, because I'm not offended by the word. And two, because they're very informative on a variety of different subjects. This one is on vampires. It's written by Jay Stevenson. And through this book, not only does he track the fictional vampires, there are three chapters about people who believe they're vampires, different groups, their activities and things. So it's a very interesting and informative read. This was published back in 2009. So of course, the movies and the books that he talks about are only going to go up to that time period. Prompt number four, and if you're wondering, I'm trying to read through my hair. A book you love about ghouls or ghosts. That goes to Journeys into the Unknown by Richard Palmazano. I was very honored to meet him during a live stream where he came on my channel and talked about his experiences, his, his books. It was just a fascinating chat. You can find that on my channel under the live link. I enjoyed this book because he has it set into different sections, the different ghost stories. He talks about the equipment that people use on investigations, as well as sharing his theories about 
the paranormal and various experiences that he's had. It's a very enjoyable read. I also liked it because Richard is here in Ontario, as am I. I always enjoy reading about different locations close to my area. That ties in with my second pick, which is Haunted Canada. This is a collection of stories. This is by Joel A. Sutherland, and this is collection four, five, and six. Again, it's an enjoyable read for me because there are a number of the locations that I know that are either around my city or close to my city. I've tabbed the different stories and put information about the locations on them. There are a number of different collections available through the Scholastic website. It's an easy, quick read. The stories are quite short. So if you enjoy adventures about ghosts and different things like that, highly recommend. Number five, Horrible Horrors, your least favorite horror, thriller, or mystery book. For me, that goes to Misery. It's the only Stephen King book that I can say honestly scared the hooey's out of me, mainly because if you've watched different paranormal channels, even they'll tell you humans are far scarier than anything in the paranormal. Misery, I think, was just creepy because it was one of those, you could actually imagine that happening to someone, which is horrible, but fans become obsessed and above and beyond. So Misery was definitely my least favorite horror read. Number six, Gothic Wonders. A favorite Gothic-themed book you've read in the past five years. My pick for that would be The Amulet by Michael McDowell. He's considered Southern Gothic, so I figure that fits into the title there. The Amulet, I've done a book review on that. You can find that in my book summaries playlist. The stories by Michael McDowell, I believe, were described in the front of one of his books as things start off bad and then they just get much, much worse for the characters as the story progresses. That certainly is the case in The Amulet. A young woman finds herself married to an individual who is not what you would call attentive or supportive. There's a horrific accident. He's sent home, and she has a mother-in-law who is equally unsupportive or helpful. It's a story that keeps you going along, as the title says, The Amulet. There's this object that just somehow moves around from person to person. Terrible things happen. The body count begins to mount, but we're never quite sure what is up with that amulet. It's a fascinating read, and it's one of those, once I started, I had to finish. I think that's when I stayed up until 1, 1.30 in the morning. I very much enjoy Michael McDowell's work. Number seven, Magic and Potions, a fiction or nonfiction book about magic and potions. Now, in this case, I decided to go with recipes versus potions. My pick is The Book of Shadows by Scott Cunningham, The Path of an American Traditionalist. Throughout it, he talks about living a magical life, describes the various holidays. There's an extensive list of herbs and plants, their various uses. And I pick this one for the prompt because he also has a number of recipes using herbs for healing remedies, as well as a number of other things. I very much enjoy Scott Cunningham's writing. 
He's someone I would very much have enjoyed meeting and speaking with. Unfortunately, he passed away a number of years ago, but his writing is like Starhawk, not all woo-woo type of stuff, but very earth-based and honoring nature and living with nature in peace. Number eight, Black Cat, a book about cats or a book with a cat as a side character or the main character. For me, that book is Spirit of the Wild Cat. I've had this book for a number of years. The photography is incredible. It goes through a wide range of the big cats. The photos are just incredible. There's information about the various cats, the location, their habitats. It's just a phenomenal book. So not only do I love my at-home indoor cats and my feral colony outdoors, but I love cats of all sizes. Yes, it is getting hot under this hair, so I'm cheating and peeking a bit more. <laughs> Number nine, Spooky Scary Skeletons, a book that sent shivers down your spine. That, for me, that book was The Entity. I read it a number of years ago as a teenager. It was one of my first really scary reads. I think it was around the same time as the Amityville Horror, which didn't really scare me that much, but maybe it was because of the various things going around about was it actually real? Was it just a couple who got in over their heads and found a different way to make money to pay off their debts? But the entity was very scary. I believe there was even a movie made about that. And because it was also, like the Amityville Horror, based on a true story, I think that's the part that really freaked me out about it. I think the entity for me was scary because it was that big, what if this is real and this could potentially happen? Okay, it's getting too hot. <laughs> as much fun as I had being cousin it, as you can tell, there's a whole lot of hair here, and it gets awfully warm. <laughs> but bad, I hope you enjoyed that. The weather here is cooler, so it was a little easier to do that as cousin it. This time, I'm not going to tag people because I'm not sure how many people have done this either last year or this year. If you've enjoyed this tag, be sure to do a video and tag me in it so I can come and see your answers. I always enjoy seeing the variety of different responses that people have. It's a great way to learn about different books and find new authors. So thank you so much to Nicole for creating this tag. Thank you to Kevin for tagging me. It was fun doing this and a great excuse to be cousin it. Until next time, you might want to keep on that nightlight and take good care.